you have a business, so you need to measure stuff, but you're also an artist, you paint, you think non-linearly. How do you reconcile these two? I think we do need to allow it to a certain extent in, in everyone. I think there's more, there are some people that, you know, are, are rightly placed to, to focus on it as the majority, but I look at it as a, of their, their day, but, but I think that we all benefit organizations benefit. We as individuals benefit by tapping into both of those parts of us in, in a work setting, in our, in our lives in general. And, and I think that that's what I've done with, with my situation, with my art and my, my consulting and, and I was recently asked um, if my painting was a hobby, um, <laughs> and 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 it was all I could do not to jump down the person's throat. And they meant it well enough, you know. There, there, it was an innocent enough question. I, like, no, it's not a hobby, <laughs> um, you know. And, and and Sorry was if I'm very laughing, but this resonates so much because it happened <laughs> very similar thing last week to me, and I I, I felt the same. So interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, and I and I kind of said, you know, it, it it the art informs my con, my consulting practice. You know, I can't; they're not separable to to me. Um, yes, I have art exhibitions, and I make I make some money um, from my art, um, not enough to to live on. But I don't know. I, I for me, I feel like I need both things because my life informs my art. So I need to not be in that silo in that that box i need to be doing things and interacting in the world that that i exist in and that world i exist in is you know with my education is a business world and so but i think that the value is in is in integrating those and bringing them both together so i do pure knowledge management I, and by pure i mean people process and technology focused mm -hmm. um knowledge management and and focus on that but I also have Radical KM that I bring in the creativity piece with, and and I have the art that, you know, the galleries, you know, and the, the exhibitions I've had, they don't care about my consulting practice, and that's fine. And some of my clients don't care about my art practice, although they benefit from it um, in, in the workshops and how I run the workshops um, and how I approach, you know, the deliverables and the things that the work that I do for them. Yeah, there's a, so there's a you're path. you're for mixing, mixing the two in each every and every individual instead of creating two separate functions, yep. sort of. Yeah, you know. yeah, it makes yeah. a ton of sense because that would create also a lot of stress. But um, sometimes it's hard to reconcile them. So maybe the the approach is yes to develop both of them, but also realize that um, it's a luxury to be able to do art and also make it sustainable. Um, and so I always think about that conversation with the CFO. I imagine me, myself at a bar with a coffee in my hand, looking at a CFO and, you know, looking at me and me talking about creativity and they talk about numbers and you're like, um, well, it's nonlinear. It's very useful. It's needed, you know, <laughs> but can I put a number on it? Not really. Yeah, so there are numbers. There are case studies, you know, all too often though, they get dismissed, you know, and I think of a particular case study I talk about with, with the radical KM and stuff and that I mentioned in, in the articles and at least two of the articles, mm -hmm. um, because it was something that was done by a KM team and, and they brought in um, arts-based interventions into the organization and they had great success with it. They created a studio space, they solved problems that they hadn't been able to solve, they improved the collaboration and the knowledge flow between teams and in, in the organization and you know and everybody word got out into the rest of the organization and everybody wanted to do it and use the studio space and take mm -hmm. advantage of it it was it was successful they had the numbers and yet there was a reorg and the organization shut the whole thing down because the numbers didn't matter the they didn't I'm guessing here, reading a bit between the lines from the case study that I read, because it's not work that I did, but but reading between the lines a little bit, whoever came in and was in charge then of the, the KM team just didn't get it. Um, and so shut it down. And I have seen that, I'm, I've worked in like knowledge management for 25 years. I've seen it 
I don't, I wouldn't even care to guess how many times I've seen it. Um, the, the KM and the activities that they're doing in the organization support it, but the VP, a new VP comes in and they don't understand or they don't care or they don't get it somehow. It doesn't matter that there actually are numbers that the organization has benefited. They shut it down because they think they look at it and go, oh, well, that's that's touchy feely stuff. They feel uncomfortable themselves. Yeah. And they project that, uh, that feeling into the decisions they make. Yeah. Yeah. They look at the numbers a lot of times. And I, and I look at some work that I did early on in my KM career and the, the numbers were high, like 180, 160, 180% return on investment. Um, you know, and management looked at it and went, no. You know, because <laughs> when you're talking about fixed assets, you're talking about returns on investment around 12%, 18%, 20%, 25%, like way below 100. Mm. So, but the thing with knowledge is that it multiplies when you share it. It's it's exponential. The growth, you know, the sharing and, the, and learning, that's exponential growth. It's not... It's not, oh, I, I'm going to use this asset a little bit better. And, and so I get, I know, another 1%. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my knowledge a little bit better. And it impacts everyone down the, the chain. Um, and this is how you end up with these, these really high returns on investment. And, and management looks at it and goes, oh, well, that's, you're making that up. Because there's, no there's no way we could have that kind of return on investment on something that's not tangible. Yeah, you because know, they're used to tangible assets.